Welcome uh, on our webinar about Google Cloud uh, Generative AI Updates and Gemini AI Model. And let's go straight away to presenting our expert speakers. So today we'll have on stage uh, uh, Max Datsenko, Chief Technology Officer at CloudFresh, and uh, uh, our second speaker, Karen Mata, Customer Engineer from Google Cloud. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and we are waiting for some insights and demo about Gemini AI model. A few words about CloudFresh. So who we are, uh, CloudFresh is a global Google Cloud, uh, Vendesk, Kasana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partners. We are trusted by more than 1,400 customers all over the world. Uh, what we do, uh, uh, we offer an entire the cycle of professional services from consulting, planning to implementation, training and further support. As for Google Cloud, uh, we cover all steps of our customer's journey with Google Cloud Platform solutions from infrastructure assessment to migration, trainings and uh, implementation of different cloud services. I will send you a link to a chat so you can explore more. Um, here you can see uh, some of our customers that work with us and transform their operation within the cloud. And uh, today we also have a special offer for you. Uh, it's a proof, uh, free proof of concept from our tech experts. So we'd like to help you to uh, test the feasibility of implementing Google Cloud solutions within your project. Um, and. Um, uh, analyze uh, Google Cloud services based on your current workloads and operations. And to make it happen, uh, we also offer uh, $1,000 pre credits on Google Cloud services, so you'll have the resources to test these solutions. So please, you are welcome to scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and we'll get in touch with you soon. And uh, please, mm, if you have some questions, you are welcome to write them to the chat. We'll have the Q&A session at the end, and our speakers will cover everything. Uh, and also, the two best questions, according to our speakers, the winners, let's say, will get some gifts from CloudFresh. So please welcome, don't be shy, ask all, everything is interested for you. So let's start. Max, please, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Anastasia. Hi, everyone. Uh, today's session will be uh, like a bit of history, a bit of products, and a lot of myth busting. Uh, actually, uh, the generative AI and AI itself is the like buzzword at the moment. Uh, at the moment, and uh, well, uh, like um, ten years ago, the big data uh, it is uh, like surrounded by myths. And uh, actually, uh, still uh, 10 years later, uh, the first question uh, to speakers about the big data is like, uh, is 20 terabyte enough big data? Uh, which is like, have uh, has nothing uh, in common with the big data concept, actually, uh, that doesn't. Um, Mm, uh, depend on uh, any, on the size of the data, actually. Uh, so, uh, a, a brief history of uh, Gen AI. Uh, the first is AI. AI at the at, at the beginning, uh, it was the mid twentieth century when the people uh, tried to simulate the human intelligence. Uh, spoiler: uh, didn't succeed uh actually uh, the uh, artificial intelligence is uh, uh has nothing in common with intelligence that's like the word from the from the past uh when it like was planned but uh actually it's something maybe even uh more uh, like better and more safe uh then the in 1980s uh, there was uh when the uh, performance of the computers uh, raised. Uh, there was a rise of machine learning, and next thirty years, uh, it like was going to deep learning. Uh, the words that you probably have um, heard before, and at the beginning, at 
like now we are living in the dawn or uh, of generative AI or generative AI revolution because the like importance of the Gen AI is comparable to uh, like invention of the internet itself or, or the Google search engine uh which is like for uh last 20 years is uh something uncomparable uh on this on this field uh so uh what is generative ai uh how it differs from the um from the ai itself uh what 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 we called ai and i like I want to emphasize that uh, it's more artificial than intelligence uh, and so it can uh, not only help you in the decision making but it can generate uh, some uh, like new and like new uh, and I will explain uh, new content uh, and so um, that's the like biggest uh, biggest difference because uh, uh, like you you can create something with a generative AI, not just uh, make a decision on the uh, like basis of the results of machine learning. So uh, uh, the myths around the artificial intelligence. Uh, is actually the same um it's like that's something that thinks and can uh do the like make the decisions without the human and uh the groups of uh, myths are connected to uh, uh like attitude to to this position first as uh hello skynet uh, and uh, second is uh, there's something what we which will do everything for us uh, both not true and we'll like come across a couple of them uh, so uh, the myth is that AI can surpass the human intelligence in all aspects which is not true uh, AI can outperform the human intelligence in the speed of uh, taking into the information uh, but uh, actually doesn't understand what is it what is it uh, and uh, artificial intelligence is not something thinking uh, is uh, generally and well uh, pretty simplifying uh, the topic but that's t9 uh, on the steroids on the pretty heavy steroids uh, maybe fatal steroids but well still it's t9 uh, nothing more it's a, it, it tries to predict the next token uh in the row so nothing more uh ai can learn and improve uh, on it without the human intervention that's like uh actually uh, ai requires human intervention and requires the actually um uh, target setting uh from the human because it doesn't have its own will uh, and um i will in in couple of seconds will tell uh why uh and because uh, the next myth is uh, ai has its own consciousness which is not true uh, ai is something programmed by human and uh, all the fears connected to uh, the story in terminator and uh, a lot of other stories uh that ai will have the, its own consciousness uh will probably never happen because uh ai is something programmed by humans uh, and humans don't know what is self-consciousness we feel it but we cannot explain it uh as we cannot explain it we can program it uh and uh, since uh, the six thousand years of philosophy uh like couldn't uncover uh, what is self-consciousness which we had with us for all those six thousand years and then before uh well there is a pretty low uh, probability that it will happen any soon uh, or like 
if any, if uh, it will happen uh, in any point in time, uh, which is doubtful. Um, well, uh, and the mechanic and the like problematics in the mechanic of uh, learning and uh, of thinking. Actually, uh, machines are learning from data, and the main mechanics of the um, uh, of the of the learning and of the decision making is the back propagation of error. Uh, which is actually, if you if you know the the game where you uh, have the sticker on your head uh, with a uh, like name who you are, like Peach or uh, Fork or the card, and uh, you you have to exclude everything else, and when come to decision, that's uh, like basically very simplifying, but that's the mechanic uh, how machines uh, like know that the cat is on the on the picture uh, there is a very sophisticated algorithm of excluding all the wrong variants uh, for sure flexibility machines uh, very highly spe uh, specialized humans uh, ad are adaptive and they can uh, easily uh, extrapolate their uh, like understanding and their uh, like context uh, to any other uh, like point of uh, knowledge, uh, which machines like cannot do uh, easily and well uh, cannot do with a without the human intervention. Uh, understanding and interpretation, uh, like machines are really uh, understanding the patterns uh, humans uh, working with uh, direct associations uh, so uh, like if you see uh, one time the person with a sword with a which is like shining glowing you know that is jedi with a lightsaber uh, after that you you know that if lightsaber is glowing uh, uh, red it's like the wrong jedi uh the machine will exclude the cats the buildings the cars and everything uh to understand that it, it's like and all the humans without the lightsabers to understand that is jedi uh and for sure the emotional and ethical dimensions machines don't have them as they don't have the self-consciousness so uh, they cannot uh, have emotions which is our driver, as you probably understand. So the next part of the myths, uh, as AI will lead uh, to a future where humans are irrelevant, uh, like artificial intelligence just cannot uh, exist, like they cannot be, it can be uh, like launched, but they cannot work without the human existence. So uh, they need us and probably they will need us forever uh ai will eventually replace all human jobs uh well not uh because ai uh cannot work without the human intervention without the human uh posting the targets and ac assessing the targets so uh actually uh on the in couple of seconds uh i will tell you ai producing the new jobs uh and uh and the last in the this portion uh the, the myth is uh implementing of ai is always expensive and complex uh which was true uh a couple a couple of years ago but the generic uh, generative ai uh democratizes the uh, ai and uh, at the moment, uh, implementation of AI is like not just straightforward plug and play, uh, as I will also mention uh, in couple slide next. Uh, but uh, it is much easier than like two years ago. We are uh, living in the very fast world. 
tell uh, the myth uh, in the root of uh, all previous myths is that AI can do it all for you. Like a lot of people believe in that, uh, but that's actually not true because uh, you need someone, uh, AI needs someone who will uh, formulate the task uh, and give the context uh, and actually uh, iterate the uh, mm, uh, those contexts and targets uh, to have the uh, result which are needed, which is needed. And uh, here we come to the prompt engineering. Uh, it's uh, something uh, that uh, someone who is uh, formulating the questions uh, which are called prompts uh, for the AI uh, and they uh, need several things, uh, iterative, which I mentioned before, uh, interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary expertise, actually uh, to make the right prompt, uh, you have to be a specialist uh, in the domain of the knowledge uh, you are asking for, uh, which is like uh, makes the uh, all specialists which worked before, uh, which are good uh, in their domain, still needed. And that will uh, stay with us forever. And uh, the main thing is that prompt should be very clear, very, very contextually rich, and uh, uh, with a very clear uh, desired outcomes. Uh, which uh, I would say uh, the very needed um, skills for the human um, communication. Uh, and isn't it ironic, uh, don't you think? Uh, I know that this uh, Easter egg is not familiar to, uh, to the younger generation, but the people uh, around my age uh, know this is the uh, video, music video of uh, Alanis Morissette, uh, ironic, uh, that AI actually don't exterminate us, but push us uh, in uh, gaining the skills for the needed, the for the interpersonal uh, communications, which most of us actually lack. Yeah, so uh, it is a little too ironic. Yes, I really do think. Uh, the next myth, uh, which is actually uh, uh, the biggest outcome of uh, all the myths before, uh, is that the large language models, which are the, like Chat GPT or Gemini or uh, any other, uh, so that's base models uh, or foundational models for GNI, uh, that they are products. No, they're actually engines. Uh, so uh, to um, get the use of the large language models, uh, you have to build the business logic on top uh, of it. Uh, and so uh, that's the really turnkey uh, understanding in large language models uh, that uh, like prevents the wrong expectations, uh, which prevents the uh, unsuccessful projects with it. So uh, they, the large language models are like engines or processors. So I uh, did a couple of uh, pictures, actually uh, speaking about the mm, uh, prompt engineering, all the content, uh, including the text and pictures, uh, is AI generated. Uh, what I did myself, uh, I wrote the uh, headers on the slides. Uh, well, and posed the right questions to uh, AI. So, uh, the 
engine could be uh, the same in the very fast sports car and in the uh, crossover like uh could there could be built a lot of different devices around the same uh cpu so uh, large language models is something like this uh but uh, on the best uh side of the story is that uh Actually, the uh, generative AI, uh, large language models, democratizes that a lot. And uh, if, um, like, for building the chatbot uh, in the like couple of years ago, you should have had the uh, like pretty nice group of the programs programmers, high skilled uh with the deep knowledge in the ai uh and a lot of time uh, at the moment in the vertex ai you could build the um, gemini based um chatbot uh, like in five minutes uh for like different tasks uh there could be needed more but not as much as like two years ago just two years ago just uh, like imagine that uh so uh, uh google gemini is the next frontier in the uh i don't see the oh yeah picture. uh next frontier in the uh, llm it's the uh like state-of-the-art large language model uh which is uh, existing in three different sizes nano pro and uh, ultra nano is for the uh, mobile devices pro is like standard model which you uh, can use easily through the uh, vertex ai and ultra actually for the, some big things uh and uh, aimed for working on the google's uh supercomputer which is built uh, in this purpose uh, on the uh, Google's uh, designed TPUs like tensor processor units five uh, generation uh, it is learned uh, it is multimodal uh, which uh, which means that it can work with uh, different sources of information with the text with videos with audio with uh, pictures uh on the input and on the output uh, and uh actually what it uh, um, stands it away from the other multimodal uh uh lms uh, is that it is uh studied it's learned on the uh different sources of uh, different forms of information simultaneously which uh makes makes the experience much more integrated it's scalable uh it's really big uh and it's integrated with the vertex ai uh which i will tell a couple of words uh in a few seconds so uh here uh, i um, like put the uh several uh, obvious uh business uh, cases for the um for the gemini llm uh which includes the legal document procedures and market research and healthcare uh, and so uh, interactive entertainment and gaming and uh, there's a lot but that's only the beginning and uh, there's much 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 more and uh it is available in vertex ai uh, vertex ai is uh, google cloud end-to-end -end, uh, ai platform where which is repository and the place to train the model and the place to launch the model so it's really end-to-end -end. and actually if you enter the uh, vertex ai in the google cloud console if you have it you can try right away uh google vertex uh, google uh gemini uh 1.0 pro is generally available and you see it all uh, ultra is also generally available but through the allow list and so uh, actually uh one more thing uh is 
uh, available for preview. But for the multimodal, uh, for the vertex, uh, you may have the, like, you are entering the vertex AI and uh, select multimodal. Uh, and uh, you have some pre-configured uh, pre uh, prompts to the vertex AI, which you can modify, uh, which you can make uh, much more creative. Uh, and uh, so I uh, invite you to do this. And if you don't have the uh, Google Cloud at the moment, uh, so you remember about our special uh, proposition. So, um, the one last but not least myth is that user data in Gemini and Vertex AI uh, is shared outside, which is not true. All the data you put in your project uh, in Vertex AI, uh, which you use for training the model, for interacting the model, is stays uh, absolutely yours. Uh, Google doesn't uh, have an access for, to it uh, and like even don't use it for uh, training the general model. So uh, all the data, all the results, all the resulting trained models uh, are absolutely yours uh, and uh, with no access from anyone. And it's absolutely compliant with GDPR, a HIPAA and all other standards. So uh, you're on the safe side on the contrary of some uh, other models uh, available on the market. Well, uh, and you can uh, have the first touch to the uh, Google Gemini uh, is the Gemini Advanced is something like ChatGPT from Google. And you have uh, uh, the product on top of uh, Gemini Ultra, uh, which is the most powerful model in the, in the world at the moment. Uh, so you may scan the, uh, the QR code or just uh, enter in the, on your Chrome uh, Gemini.google.com. Uh, so, uh, and uh, like use it, uh, you have Gemini there uh, like as default. Uh, Gemini Advanced is paid, but you have the two month trial free, free trial period. So, you have two months to try. Uh, well, and one more thing uh, for me, uh, it's the Gemini 1.5. Uh, it's already available for the private reviews for the uh, like trusted customers and uh, developers. Uh, it is uh, as powerful, the Gemini 1.5 Pro is as powerful as Gemini Ultra. And it has 1 million, unbelievable 1 million tokens uh, for the context. 1 million tokens, uh, to understand, is 1 hour video or seven, uh, 11 hours audio or 700,000 of words. So uh, that's much and that's bigger than anything on the market. And uh, actually 10, millions, uh, 10 million tokens uh is uh, in development uh like couple of seconds uh do it ai we mentioned it in the name of the presentation and that's your like personal assistance uh based on ai on generative ai in uh, google cloud uh that's something which you have uh in every google cloud console window and you may ask it for the insights, for the commands uh, you need, for the recommendations, for the uh, security alerts, and so uh, far, far beyond. And a couple of its um, like functional uh, implications. Uh, do it AI for developers. That is something uh, that writes the code rewrites the code, comments the code, uh, tests the code, uh, documents the code, uh, and uh, that can uh, shorten your uh, development si uh, cycle and uh, increase your safety in your code, uh, like in factors, in big factors. 
and do it AI for security operations as the generative AI, uh, which works together with uh, Google's uh, leading, the industry leading products uh, like Mandiant uh, and Chronicle uh, to find the breaches, uh, to find the security threats and to mitigate them. Uh, and actually, uh, do it AI for developers. Uh, do it AI for security operations is coming soon, and do it AI for developers is already available. And until, uh, if I'm not mistaken, until May 17, it's free for uh, one license per um, uh, billing account. So you may try it free and uh, like feel uh, what it can uh, give to you. Thank you, and uh, Carlina, over to you. Thank you so much, Max, um, for this interesting session, and thank you all for having me today. Uh, my name is Caroline, and I am customer engineer in Google Cloud. And today I'm going to present Gemini and walk you through the um, Gemini um, uh, demo. So yeah, so let's start with Gemini. So Gemini is the largest and the smartest AI, uh, uh, smartest AI model that uh, Google have, and not only Google have, but also the largest model that exists uh, um, in the market. So it's the best one uh, currently. And that's because as Max mentioned that it support up to uh, 1 million tokens, so the largest model that found in the market support up to 200 tokens. So can you imagine the difference between 100 token uh, or 200 token to 1 million token? That's why Gemini is leading the market right now. Um, it handled up to 1 million token. And also it was tested by our internal teams uh, and it works with 10 million token as well. So um, Gemini, um, Google, when when Google think about Gemini, uh, Google want to replicate the, re the reality. This was Google vision about AI. So human being learn by hearing, seeing, uh, writing, reading. So this is how human being learn. So that's why uh, that's the same exact thing that Google would like to replicate into reality with the AI. So Gemini um, consider a very big step in AI uh, in uh, in Google's um, goal. Uh, so Gemini now can understand text, audio, video, and even code at the same time. So you don't have to to um, train the model in different um, things. So let's talk about uh, the performance. So in terms of performance, Gemini was roughly tested on 30 out of 32 uh, wide known um, benchmark, and uh, it exceeded the current state of art results. So it's performing um, very well. It's the leading in the performance right now. And this is because um, different reasons that I'm going to explain in the next slides. And uh, for the um, Gemini is the first AI model to outperform human experts uh, by 90%. So can you imagine this? So it's, it's replicating what human are doing. So of course, as Max mentioned, it will not replace the human because it it still need intervention by human um, prompts and um, questions and uh, even the conscious. Um, so it will not be able to replicate the conscious right now, but so uh, but it's still able to give 90% of the human um, uh, 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 expertise. So now, uh, let's talk more about the Gemini uh, models that we have. So we have um, optimized Gemini, uh, Gemini for three different sizes, uh, Ultra uh, and Gemini Pro and um, Gemini Nano. 
uh, which means that it will be able to cover um, the use cases from the complex one that is running in data center to um, the lightweight tasks that uh, need to be run on mobile devices um, uh, on mobile devices so uh, the gemini ultra is the the most capable uh, and the largest model that handle complex tasks and gemini pro is the best model for scaling uh, across a wide and different type of tasks and gemini nano is um, the most efficient uh, model for device device tasks and by this um let me explain why gemini is leading this is not because it's uh, only um, the largest model or this is, uh, uh, or because it's handled up to um 1 million token this is this is of course make a huge difference other than the existing models that we have but also um the native modality and sophisticated reasoning and it can code in advanced level I'm, I'm going to explain this in different slides so let's talk first about the um, native modality so gemini is built uh, as multimodal from the beginning from the start um, that means that it's trained in different type of data simultaneously um so it allow it allowed to understand the reason across them um seamlessly so let me say it in a different way so when we trained the model gemini model we didn't uh we we trained them on audio text video and code at the same time so we didn't separate the type of data we let the model know exactly uh, all the data types together so it can learn same as the human the human can read and see at the same time so it builds the the whole picture same exact the gemini the traditionally the ai models uh, was built like training the model in different type of data so train the model on images and then train the model on text and then train the model for coding and then stitching them together to build a multimodal uh, multimodal model but this takes a lot of time and is not efficient because um when you use the multimodal with multiple things like audio and text and video it will not be able to perform as the gemini because it's not it it, it doesn't have the ability to walk through all different type of data seamlessly so that's why gemini is leading in the um, the multi model and for sophisticated reasoning um this is because it's its ability to understand uh data in different um in different type of data at the same time and also the ability to have a lot of data at the same time like up to 100 uh, sorry 1 million uh data so you can upload bunch of books piles of books and let the model understand and read it at the same time so it this model is well trained on different areas so it 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 is trained on uh, law on science on it on finance so in different type of data so it has the ability to answer most of the questions in different area at the same time and uh the the the, the best for me now uh in that gemini offers is um that um it's handling to the code um so it's leading foundation model for coding um, in the world now because it supports code up to uh, more than 30,000 uh, uh, 30, line of code. So uh, imagine the, the code that you have in your company. So uh, you can upload all the code and ask the model to debug it. So instead of um, spending a lot of time debugging the code and or enhancing the code, 
you can just upload it to the Gemini and ask to enhance the, the code for you in just a few seconds. So this is really amazing. And imagine that you would like to improve the code, improve the, the structure of your code uh, of your company. Imagine how much time will it take and without using Gemini. And with using Gemini, it only takes a few seconds. And here comes the pricing. So everyone will ask or assume that the pricing of Gemini will be very expensive. But I want to rest you assured that this is um, a wrong prospection. This is uh, not true uh, because Google was focusing uh, while improving the Gemini and training the Gemini model. Uh, Google was focusing on the hardware and software uh, optimization so that uh, we were able to reduce the price of Gemini model four times less uh, per output, uh, per, per, sorry, per input character and two times less uh, uh, per output character. Um, and while still improving the uh, model, so um, while improving the model quality and uh, reducing the time. Uh, so this is. Um, I believe that this will be leading, once the Gemini Ultra uh, is public, this will be leading the um, market because it will be cheaper, it will be um, faster, it will be uh, the best performance. So yeah, this is very promising. And uh, yeah, um, Gemini Pro is currently available in AI Studio. AI Studio is basically a um, free web-based uh, developer tool that you can start uh, using it to, um, to help you with, with prototype to launch your application quickly. And if you already um, a Google, uh, have account, a Google account uh, user, you can use it through Vertex AI. And um, yeah, so it comes the, uh, for the demo time. Uh, before going through the hands-on demo, I would like to share a video which is mind-blowing how effective is Gemini. Um, and this is Gemini 1.5. This is not uh, publicly available. It's in the private preview. Uh, it's only available for um, trusted tester group. Uh, but this is uh, one of the um, tester uh, um, one of the experiments that was done on Gemini 1.5 and it was recorded. Um, it's really impressive. Let me um, show it to you. So yeah, here uh, in Gemini 1.5 Pro, they uploaded video with 44 minutes. Um, and um, uh, yes, so as you can see here, it, took, uh, it takes 600 um token 600,000 token and all uh, they did is they upload the video and ask some question to the uh, model so here it's exp um, asking the model to to get the exact timestamp when the uh, piece of paper was um removed from the person pocket and the model is analyzing the video and understanding the query and it got the exact time where the piece, piece of paper was uh, removed from the uh, person's pocket. And here the, uh, the engineer took this timestamp and check if this is true or not. And yes, as you can see, it's, it has, um, it's the, the same exact moment that uh, the, pocket, uh, the, the piece of paper was uh, removed from the pocket. And it's not only mentioning the timestamp, it also mentioned what exactly was in the uh, piece of paper. So let's continue. Um, so here it mentioned four dollars and by Will Smith. And also uh, you can write, uh, so you can draw um, any drawing in uh, as a scene in the movie and mention, um, can you specify which scene, with what timestamp this scene was recorded or captured, and the model will understand the image and will give the exact time for the image, for the scene. So let's see 
it's it, the ability of the human eye to understand the caricature and um, turn it to reality and check what exactly uh, the similarity between the the image um, the handwritten image to um, the scene so it's very powerful um, and this is how Gemini 1.5 will uh, be performing and now I'm going to do some tests on Gemini uh, so now I will upload this image of uh, a GCP architecture I will upload it to um, Gemini and I will ask some question either by voice I will um, like send audio asking some questions or I can um, upload the image and send text so let me uh, share my screen okay okay so can you see my screen now okay so this is um, a tool that um, was created by our solution architect yes uh, Olivia. do you have question no sorry okay no worries okay this tool uh, is built by our solution architect to test to let us test um gemini um uh, uh, one uh, point zero um with image and uh, audio as well so here for example i will upload the image of gcp architecture as you can see here i uploaded the image and will ask some question can you briefly explain the architecture in the image and it's gonna show you the the um, image shows the architecture of a data processing system data is collected from on-premises applications and streamed to the cloud the data is then processed and stored in the cloud the processed data is then used to generate reports and visualizations. The system is designed to be scalable and secure. So it was able to detect what is inside the image and explain it in a simple way because I'm asking uh, for briefly explaining. And also I can ex uh, um, ask the model um, to just let me disable the voice one second. And yeah. So can you see my screen now? OK, so let me record, um, for example. Um, oh, sorry. OK, there is something wrong with the tool. Give me a second to refresh it. Okay, so let me here record my voice, my question. So what are the use of Google Cloud load balancing? And I will upload it. So here it will understand the audio as well and will be able to answer the... Okay, so this is the first demo the second demo that i would like to show uh, to present is um this one uh so this is the vertex ai where you can um check the multimodal uh, which is gemini here for example if we have if uh, your use case is that you are selling furniture or selling anything e-commerce so um you would like to give your end users seamless experience and um interactive experience for example they would like to understand more about your product um they would like to check if your products will uh, match the style of their uh living room for example so let's have an example here i will um upload a living room my living room for example this is the living room, okay? And I will mention that this is my living room. And I would like to choose 
one of the coffee table that match the style. Okay, and I will upload some of the coffee tables that I would like to use. This is the first coffee table. This is the first coffee table. Let me show you the coffee tables. And we'll add another coffee table. For example, this one. Okay. This, the second coffee table. Can you help me choose which coffee table match my living? Um, style. And submit. So the model will be able to understand um, the, the 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 image and what exactly in the image and the style of each um, coffee table, and will give um, their opinion about which coffee table will match the style of the living room. So this is an example. You can use it in your uh, own use case. So for example, if you have um, uh, for example, um, close uh, application, um, so you can use it uh, and your end user ask which, uh, which uh, dress match my style, which um, um, pants uh, will, will, will be um, matching this color. So you can um, increase your, uh, uh, the customer interaction, so you will increase the uh, selling and to increase as well the profit. There is another example. Um, for example, if you uh, are a company that uh, mainly concerned for, for plants and you would like to uh, give your end user interactive, um, interactive application so that they can insert um, image for plant, that plant, for example, and here is the image for plant okay and i would like to know i have this plant but i don't know what is this plant and i would like to know uh, how i can revive it so i will ask what is this what is the type of this plant and how can i revive it so here it will give an exact answer of what is the type of this plant. So yes, exactly. This is a strawberry plant, and um, it it have it was that because it's not watered and um, uh, and it gives um, like recommendations so that you can put it in a soil, a fresh soil, and water it in less often. So you can try to propagate it by taking cutting from the stem. So it gives like recommendation how you can revive it. So it's very powerful to use Gemini in your use cases, whether you are in IT industry or you are in the retail industry, even in finance, you can upload the finance documentation and ask some questions on the profit, on the, 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 the market share. Uh, so instead of calculating everything in details, you can let Gemini uh, upload the tables and everything and Gemini uh, or the the um, AI models Google AI models will be able to understand what exactly in the table what exactly in the image and understand it and will give you uh, a recommendation after so yeah um, that's all from my side um, I hope you enjoyed the demo and we'll back to we'll uh, uh, hand it over to Anastasia Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, so let's go to our slides. Please, uh, Caroline, can you stop to sh sharing your screen? 
And Max, please uh, give me a co-presenter rights. And I'd like to uh, to read some questions from the chat. I see that many of them are already covered. Uh, Max, would you like to add something to Robert's question about uh, cybersecurity feature or coloring? Because I saw that you already answered. Uh, yeah, I answered, and probably uh, Carolina will add something. Yes, yeah, so the question was, as for cybersecurity, where it's possible to apply the feature, uh, does it only cover Google Cloud projects uh, or no? You're muted. Okay, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so for cybersecurity, so we have um, um, a solution based for the security only called um, security uh, pawn, uh, sec pawn, and this is not released yet. It's under testing, and also it's allowed for trusted tester. But of course, you can use Gemini um, for just recommendation. Um, but if you need something to cover all the GCP products from the cyber security, so you can wait for the security um, part. Thank you, I hope we answer it. I saw that the question of Oleg is already answered in the chat by Max. Max, do you wanna add something about uh, collecting no. users' data from conversation? Uh, well, I told this in the presentation and uh, in the response. So all the data you are putting into the models in the Vertex AI doesn't matter Gemini or uh, any other uh, because there's a lot uh, of well, like Google's models and open source models. You can store there uh, your models. Uh, if you wish, and all the data you put into the models are staying inside this project. So, that uh, period. Thank you. And uh, the same for the my question. Please estimate when Google will provide the service of video creation of Sora OpenAI quality level. Oh, Would well, Google like uh, didn't even uh, like shown the uh, plan for doing such product at the moment uh, and well as far as i know uh sora is uh, like also announced but without any dates so we don't know when uh, even sora will be uh, generally available so uh, not not possible at the moment Thank you. I saw that Narcy got answer for her questions. I just like, uh, I see that there is an interest in Asana solutions. So I'd like to add that uh, we're also Asana partners and you can always uh, uh, fill out the form and you'll get in touch with our experts and then we'll, they will cover your question about Asana as well. If you are interested in um, uh, if Asana operating AI prompt. Uh, so let's and go actually, to... Asana has its own AI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's go. Uh, we have a question from Yaroslav. Does it have uh, some use in medicine already as additional diagnostics, maybe? Yeah, I can take this question. So Google has the MedPon, and um, since it's very sensitive uh, topic, and um, we don't allow to. Um, anyone to use the platform with direct patient because we care too much about the patients um, however the platform pass exams the, the 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 hardest exam in us i i don't remember the name right now um with very high score but still google care about the patient so uh, it limited the it's uh, currently google limiting the use of medpon to only the trusted tester so you have to apply uh, for the trusted tester and mention the use case and how you are going to use the medpon uh, but if you currently need med, uh, like medical um, advice gemini will be able to answer all your question because as i mentioned gemini is uh, currently trained on different type of data like flow finance medical and it so um it's still work with medical but if you need specific 
um, use with the medical like research or something like that and you would like to join the trusted tester you have uh, to contact one of the sellers um, and we can um, send the form for you I hope this answers your question Thank you, Olivia. Do you want to add something? I want to ask you, um, um, kind of, um, for the medical side, um, do you think it's possible to search for good, good uh, sites to run my studies, my clinical trials, uh, in sites where they have previously, if I put the, um, the class of a drug and where I want to to run it, do you think it can recommend me the sites to go with good track record of, uh, you know, good delivery of data? Oh. Uh, so you mean by sites, websites to um, the, the source of data, right? So it's like, I mean, it would use probably the, you know, the clinicaltrials.gov or one of these websites where I'm just thinking, because for me, you know, being a physician, I think, uh, the patients going to get information in the in in the web is very good for some some part but it's very dangerous for some other part exactly. and uh, you know I'm, I'm very divided about that because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we cannot move forward with good recommendations because they have read uh, something else or you know but uh, in terms of the research part Mm -hmm. uh, it could be very helpful to help help identifying good uh, sites to recruit patients into clinical trials. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah, yeah so definitely, um, Gemini can help you with this, um, and um, it, it will give some like websites, but you have to revise them. Um, and if you think that you need um, a very specific uh, topic. Uh, with um, me medical top topic, so you can uh, uh, access the med the medpon. This will be more specified for the the medical. It can help you with the um, uh, research and um, uh, medical research. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Carolina, for answering. Uh, let's uh, move on. We are running out of time, so I will also uh, read some questions from our Q and A folks. Uh, so there is one question: Do you have any examples in prompt engineering in Gemini on uh, Google Cloud Platform, for example, writing correct context for Gemini? Uh, yes, um, as um, as the demo that I mentioned. Uh, that I um, that I presented few seconds. Um, you you can see the prompt and you can try it using the GUI or you can use it uh, using the SDK. Um, so um, yeah, you can get the code and uh, we have different um, documents that explaining exactly how you can use it uh, using the prompt or the um, SDK code. Does this answer your question? I, I think so. It was an anonymous question, so we'll wait, if not. And the, there is another question. As you mentioned, Gemini was trained on different types of data simultaneously. How did Google manage to do it? Are they used some kind of shared vector space for different types of, types of data? Okay. The question from all. Yeah, thank you so much for this question. But this is like uh, internal information that we cannot share. Even I don't have access to this information uh, because this um, how Google pioneer in this area. So I don't think they will not uh, they will share this kind of information. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, Max. Uh, well, uh, I see. Uh, the first is about the uh, right um, prompts uh, is like advanced prompt engineering and well if uh, a lot of people uh, would be interested or we uh, pretty probably could uh, make the separate webinar because it's like not something uh, which could be uh, given in like uh, 20 words and uh, 30 seconds and uh, also uh, the uh, um, 
I have, uh, I see the question about that great feature that was reviving the strawberry. Can I also upload the photo of my wife? So, uh, Gemini told me what should I do to make her happier? Uh, definitely yes. But as I told in the section with the uh, prompt engineering, you have to, uh, to give it a lot of context because Gemini also already has the context about the strawberries, uh, not about not about your wife. Sorry. Uh, all the all the functions uh, switched on. Sorry for that. Uh, so, uh, not uh, about your uh, wife. Uh, so, if you should uh, give a lot of context about your wife. And uh, Gemini will definitely help you with making her happier. Uh, so, but uh, anyway, I, I, I think that if you uh, will give enough, enough uh, context, you will, you will know how to make her happier yourself. Thanks, Max. Let's answer uh, uh, two questions that are left. Uh, so, is there a plan for a feature inside of Gemini similar to custom GPTs? This is the first question. Will it be possible to customly modify the behavior of Gemini chat? Yes, so um, definitely this is an our roadmap. Um, as we started in the uh, Pond 2, it started like the Gemini, and then we added the fine tuning feature so that it can suit your use case. So we are going to have fine tuning and grounding uh, in the next um, release. Thank you. And the last one, can one train a Gemini app and then run it on the on conversation, commercial online platform? And uh, what kind of licenses do you offer for this? Okay, so this is um, somehow similar to the previous question that you, for, for now, we don't have um, the availability to train the Gemini model, but you can um, use uh, Gemini, um, as it is, and in the future, we will add the fine tuning. But if you would like to um, train the Gemini model, you can use other services called Vertex AI Search and Conversation, where you can provide the model with your own data. So the model will learn based on your data and will give answer based on the data that you provide, whether it's image, uh, uh, documents, PDFs, and then if the 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 data uh, if the model doesn't find the answer in your own document it will give general answer based on what gemini um, uh, learned and trained okay thank you i just got one more question for you carolina in the q a so let's cover this uh, the last one mm -hmm. uh, can you give links to some research papers about best practices to use gemini or prompt engineering with it uh, yeah uh, definitely uh, i have some um, links i can pass it to anastasia and she will add it to the slides you, uh, you mentioned anastasia that you will um, forward the slides to the, the yeah okay. Perfect. I will definitely add some links uh, and uh, yeah, you can contact me um, if you have more questions. I would happy to answer those. Uh, yeah, Robert has something else. Uh, still wondering how one might use the feature you mentioned in one slide, do it for GCP, AI drive and threat detection. How would it work? Or will it monitor havers and now all? of the projects, uh, with see firewall, which threads do you have in mind? We got so many questions uh, from Robert. Uh, if you want, we can cover them uh, partially, but Robert, please, you can always get in touch with Max after the webinar and uh, cover all the question on our free consultation uh, for Google Cloud Services. So please don't hesitate to uh, to fill this form via the QR code and we will follow all of your questions about Duet AI for Google Cloud and our next webinar uh, will be about Duet AI for Google Cloud Cloud solution, Duet AI for developers, so we'll share it with you and invite you all on this webinar. Uh, 
Uh, I think uh, we can end it here. I'd like to thank everyone who joined us and uh, especially thank you our uh, speakers uh, for sharing the expertise about Gemini and Gemini and see you in our next events. Thank you. Have a nice day ahead. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.